Hello everyone, this is Sean, and this is, uh, I guess, the start of part five of the Mark IV DeLorean build. Today I'm going to use my mixture to completely flatten down the, uh, the train tracks. Because I noticed, you might not be able to tell on camera, I noticed that when I um, corrected the gray, it gave everything a flat coat. So I'm going to try that and I will be back. Okay, I'm back. I've done about half of it. About three ties left to go, so I might as well uh, do it on camera here. And that also means that I can get some of the um, paint up close that was missed because of the uh, gray primer that, you know, the paint just couldn't get everywhere, the spray paint. But since I have matched up the color with the custom mix I made a few couple weeks ago, that should work just fine. Well, actually, it was more like three weeks ago. It was around March 12th, and this is now April 6th. But this will help uh, smooth everything out, too, because what I did when I created the custom mixture is I just sort of patched in where the uh, gray still was. I didn't exactly go over everything. And this time I'm going over everything so that it all looks the same and it smooths out a lot of the, uh, the wrinkles and everything. So that is, uh, that's the end of my adjustment for now. You can uh, see the final result, well, the wet result here. It'll be dry later. So I'll just set it down flat. It'll dry nicely. And I will uh, wipe off the um, top of the bottle so that there isn't any paint on the lid. <clears throat> Thankfully now, <clears throat> because I used some of it, the bottle is uh, just a little bit less than empty. I mean full, a little bit less than full. And of course, as I use more of it, it will uh, be a lot better. <clears throat> so that's, uh, that's all for the DeLorean Mark IV. That'll go over here. But as a bonus, I'll show you what I did with a little figure. Now, this is a little figure. It's from a line called Starcom, right? And I got this little guy. He had two magnetic feet when I got him in 89 from a friend. But he lost his arm, and at first I made it, you know, white with liquid paper, like to signify some kind of cast or something. But I realized I could use my... Uh, satin black from folk art and my steel gray from folk art to uh, fix his helmet and his uh, missing arm section of the armor so that he looked pretty well as good as new and it dried overnight and it looks pretty well indistinguishable at least the black does as far as the helmet you can see on this section it's already dried it looks pretty blended in and I'll just have to do a bit of touching up on the top. So it's amazing how close the match it is for a folk art steel gray. I mean, this Starcom figure is at least, well, 35 years old, clearly, almost. And I got these folk art paints in 2018. So that's uh, quite good there. <clears throat> so I'll let the uh, train tracks dry. Oops, turn it so you can see them. I will let the train tracks dry overnight and I'll come back and show you the results uh, maybe tomorrow evening so anyway talk to you all later and have a good day hello everyone uh, this is Sean and this is part 5b of the mark IV DeLorean build series. This is model build number 34 on my channel. So I uh, 
Today I just um, finished the assembly of stage one, which is gluing this steering wheel to the completed dashboard, as you can see here. So you can see the, uh, the dials and everything. You can see all the different colors. Oh, actually, there is one thing uh, more I should have to put on the uh, dashboard. It's the alarm clock. So let me just move the camera and uh, get it into range here. And that should give you a good view of the uh, everything. So I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Of course, before I uh, assemble the clock, now we'll see if I can get a good view here. You see the hands on the clock? I want to use the ultra fine black sharpie here to uh, carefully do the hands. So we'll see if I can get it done on camera carefully. Oh, there you are. See, just a couple strokes, and there it is. So now I will carefully uh, cut the clock off the um, sprue tree with the snippers here. Okay, so let's see. There we go. There we are. Okay. And get the uh, Tamiya liquid cement out. There it is. I try to do it from the bottom so that the liquid cement doesn't disturb the paint on the uh, outside. And it's going down. There you go. There you go. And the clock is now in place. So that is, uh, now what I have to do, of course, is I'm going to have to touch up the clock with some uh, brass using the fine point brush here. Actually, I'm going to move this box so that it is not creating such a shadow. Ah, there we go. So that's a good thing about having a larger workbench. You can uh, move things around better. There we go. Okay, good. Now you don't have that horrible uh, shadow in here. So I can put the instructions. All right, there's the uh, assembly marked on the guide. <laughs> so now I can say that uh, step one is complete. All right, so on to step two. So I'll set step one aside. Yeah, set it on the tracks. Oh wait, I have to do the touching up. So I'll be I'll be right back. There we go. So now you've got a better view of the workbench. And this is the surface I put the uh, stuff on. So now you have to carefully color the flat brass. But first, I'm going to shake it up because the only brass I could find was the uh, the testers brass. Couldn't find one in um, the Tamiya color. All right. Or the folk art. So that should be precise enough to just carefully take it off the... Uh... There we go. Okay. So carefully...
Actually, I don't need to do that side. That, that should be good. Okay, so the clock has been done. So now I can carefully uh, do the interior. Oh. All right. hmm. So I got to get out the pieces for the interior bucket. So I'll do that and I'll be back. All right, so you have the uh, the two seats and you have the two green things which actually span step two and three. You can see step three up here where you put the green thing in there. That's all I'm going to do for now because you have to uh, actually, you have to actually color some stuff, detail paint some stuff before you do it. So I'll cut off part 19. There, there's part 19. I'm going to have to use a toothpick or something to get the holes in part 20 expanded enough so the pegs will fit in. That's the thing about snap fit kits. Sometimes you have to get the uh, pieces out of them enough so that they'll actually snap in place. And you can see the section on the back of the DeLorean where part 20 is supposed to snap into place. So carefully remove it from the sprue tree. There. And... There. All right. Okay, so let's see here. Let's see if I can at least get part 19 in place before I have to uh, put it on the car. There. So you got part 19 attached to part 20. Give it a little uh, Tamiya cement. To make sure from the bottom of course you don't want to disrupt the paint there and we'll see if we can just uh, fit it in place here and you can see how I'm going to have to paint the one side of the piece with some uh, light green but I want to set it in place before I do that because you see what side it's on. So sometimes snap pit fit parts are a bit tricky. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll be back. So it turns out I'm going to have to use a bit of the glue after all from the underside, of course. That'll secure the tabs in place, and that'll prevent any uh, glue from getting on the paint. But what I will do is I will uh, do the lime green. So let me see if I have a lime green folk art paint, and I'll be right back. Found the lime green. Should be a close match for the uh, the attachments, so we'll see. Just have to do the one side and do it with the thinnest brush. Of course, I have to get all the copper off from the last time. Or the brass, you know, when it touched up the clock. There we go. Well, I don't know if it needs to be that thick, but here we go.
Here we are. So now it's all colored. That's good. You can put the paint back where it came from. And then I can uh, cut out the seats because those will be the next things that get glued into place. Now the seats, I never had any trouble with their tabs. As you can see, there are uh, two side tabs and one front tab for each seat. And they're both called number 12, so it shouldn't be too difficult to uh, take them off their sprue here. I made sure to manually paint the sides before I did any touching up, before I did any attachment. While they were still on the sprue tree, there we go. All right, so that's going to need the thicker glue. I'm not going to be too worried about getting it on the floor this time because they'll be under the, the glue surface will be underneath the seats anyway. So there and there. All right, so first seat. Good, see that snapped into place nicely. So let's just hope that the uh, next one does the same thing. We're going to see in just a minute here. I know it's billed as a snap fit kit, the DeLoreans, but I always used glue with them just in case. And I never guessed wrong with that. There we go, see? All right, so there are the assembled seats in the interior bucket. There they are. And so now I can mark them on the guide as assembled. And that is step two of the uh, Mark IV DeLorean. That's all uh, complete. I'm just gonna mark the legend category assembled and of course there's a tiny section so you can see the uh, the guide marked here you know three legend colors spray painted hand painted assembled now you go over to step three all right so it's not complete yet because you still haven't done any detail painting. Now I can color the... Um, well, that's fascinating. Because the dashboard has been detail painted, I could actually assemble it with its slots into the uh, section. It has a big slot and has a tiny slot. It even has a little slot that fits uh, fits underneath the uh, gear shift. So I'm going to try that also. Every little bit I can actually... Oh, got to use the uh, thick cement for this one. Don't want anything to go wrong. And the dashboard is going to cover up most of everything anyway, so... It won't matter if there's some glue on that surface. There we go. All right, let's see how this goes. There we are. So like that. So we'll fit that slot in there. Like so. Bring the hole down like that and there we are so the dashboard is now also in place on the interior bucket and you know that is going to be a good uh, photo to summarize part two there we go 
and I'll make sure to take a photo of all four sides. And it's highly appropriate, you know, the full completion of step two is part two. Of course, this won't be a this won't be a uh, twelve part build or anything. But. So all I have to do now is use the stickers to create the train temperature gauge and the hoverboard and then put them in there. That'll be perfect. So that's about as much as I can uh, do at this time because I still have to detail paint uh, part 13, which is the back gauge. It has the DeLorean, it has the it has the flux capacitor, it has the time circuits. It has the speed indicator of the car on the far right, right above that right side peg. And you can see the little pegs and you can see the little holes they fit in along there. So I will, uh, I'll do that next. That'll be beginning part six. That'll be the continuing the assembly of the interior bucket and the detail painting and then I once the inner bucket is complete it'll be assembled to the bottom of the car and then I'll have to start detail painting the outside of the body in preparation for the installation of the windshield and the upper roof time circuits so that, that's all for part 12 I mean part 5 and I'll see you here next time for part 6 when I Canary on with the detail painting. See you then. Bye-bye.